Well, I guess this fucking thing's got to be working. So, uh... Let's try this from a different angle. This is called A Fish Story. And it's by me. A girl came over last night. She was drunk and she just walked right into my house. I didn't want her to be there, but I was too cowardly to tell her to get out. She sat down on the couch, lit a cigarette, and began talking. I couldn't figure out what she was saying, so I just kept nodding my head and grunting every so often. She had this monotone voice, and it just kept going on and on and on. Finally, after she'd smoked about a million cigarettes and talked about boring stuff, including her dead father and the fact that she was a minister at the Church of Religious Science, she got up and took off her clothes. She kind of scared me when she did that for some reason. The nakedness was too abrupt. Then she sat down, plump, on the couch, and she lit another smoke. You want to fuck my brains out, she asked. I didn't know if it was meant to be sexy or what, but it didn't strike me that way. In fact, I didn't much want to fuck her brains out. What I wanted was just to be alone in the dark with the light off and the hum from the color TV. That sucked. I didn't like sound when I watched TV. But that wasn't how it was, was it? She got up and unzipped my pants and took my penis in her mouth. She began sucking on it rather noisily. <laughs> my penis responded, but I still didn't feel anything one way or the other. I just kind of sat there and watched myself. Pretty soon we began, we began to fuck. It was horrible. Fucking her, <laughs> fucking her was like fucking a piece of dead, decayed meat. Truly, it was as if by some strange process, all the life in, and the juices had been sucked out of her body, and now she was this old, dried-out piece of beef jerky. Her cunt was very dry and scratchy. God damn these pages. It felt like it was full of sand or something. I was afraid that my penis was going to get all scratched to pieces. This made me feel bad. Finally, she made some noises and came. I did, too. I wanted to lay back but and rest, but she got up and sat on my cock. Apparently, she wasn't finished. This time, while we fucked, I just wandered off. In my mind, I was on the beach, only it wasn't a very nice day. The sky was very gray and dismal. What's more, the entire beach was covered with the bodies of dead fish. Dead, decayed fish, with open mouths and wide, staring goggle eyes. I wandered amongst the fish, occasionally cracking and snapping the dried-up bodies with my toes. It was sort of a nice sound. I could see for miles and miles ahead of me. As far as the eye could see, the beach was covered with the bodies of dead fish. After a while, I fell asleep. But soon, I awoke, I awoke with a start. Jilzy, that was her name, was hanging over the edge of the, of the bed with her butt stuck way, way the hell up in the air. More, she said, just like that. More. What a gal. It was, I was much too tired to fuck, so I put a couple of fingers inside her, her cunt and I moved them around a little. She just lay there like that over the edge of the bed, and I felt around inside her. The whole thing was ridiculous. What a life, I thought to myself. What a silly, stupid, goddamn way to spend your life. And it was, wasn't it? Goddamn these pages. Gotta get this page turning gig down. It really didn't it really didn't make much sense if you stopped to think about it. None of it. I thought that maybe I should feel sorry for her, but I couldn't. She was totally empty. I knew that once she had been a young girl, probably a pretty young girl, with a warm pulsating body. Maybe she'd even had a boyfriend who loved her very much. But now she was the dead flesh, fisheye woman of Athenis. How was it that the life could have been removed from her like this, I wondered. How could it be? But truthfully, I didn't care. 
What possible difference could it have made? For a moment, I got really scared thinking that maybe I could get infected by the dead fl flesh, dried out, creeping slime fish disease. But I realized that was just silly. It was just my mind playing its usual tricks. Next morning I awoke. She was lying there sleeping with her mouth partially open. A crab crawled out of her mouth and ran across the bed. In the light of the day, I could see that she had been working on her tan. I could see the tan where it had begun to peel off, and her mustache where it had been bleached a little. Double chin again. Got to get rid of that double chin. I'll just hold it. I, <laughs> I can't do that. I didn't know what to do. My territory, my humble home, had been invaded by this weird fish beast. And what was I to do? Just as I thought this, she sat straight up in bed. She sat like that for a minute or so, staring goggle-eyed out of the window, saying nothing. I wondered if she had anything at all inside her head. She lit up a smoke. After that, she got up to go to the bedroom, bathroom. She was already in the bedroom, stupid. I was surprised to see that, in fact, she had a, a, a really nice body. Somehow I expected to see the flesh dripping and hanging from her bones. We got dressed. In the kitchen, we silently drank black coffee. I read the paper and wondered how long she intended to stay. I was afraid that I might become depressed if she stayed too much longer. Soon, she got up, went to the icebox, and made a Spam sandwich. It's for my lunch, she said. Didn't even ask me if she could use my Spam. What a bitch. When she was done, she put the Spam sandwich in her purse. It was one of those very cheap, shiny red purses like you see at Woolworths. This depressed me even more. Of course, I get depressed over just about anything because I'm manic depressive. Oh, Lord, I thought, please help her. Please help me. Please help somebody. Suddenly I thought of the gun in my drawer. It would be so simple. I would go in, get the gun, come back out, and simply put it to her head. She was so completely unaware of her body and of the world around her that she'd never even notice. There'd be no hint of danger, no struggle. I'd, put, I'd, I'd come up on the side of her, put the barrel to her hand, and kablooey! That'd be that. I could see the whole thing, how her head would explode out and her brains would shoot out all over the kitchen wall, splattering them with red. I could see them, well, it was, yeah, it was totally red. I could see her eyeballs popping wide open and the blood pouring from her ears. Most of all, I could see the expression of surprise on her face. Her mouth would open very wide as if she were saying, Oh, that part bothered me somewhat. She got up from the table and then just came over. In fact, she came right over and kissed me goodbye, right on the cheek. I walked her to the door. I watched her back as she went down the driveway. There she went, an empty package. She was a mother. She was somebody's daughter. She was a minister with the Church of Religious, Religious Science. But it didn't matter. She was gone. She was finished. Finito. Kaput. After she'd gone, I went back inside the house and I dumped out all the butts from the ashtrays. Ah, there. Then I put on a George Jones album and went outside to water the plants. The end.